Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. This kind of video is one of my favorite kind of videos to make because I get to talk about new stuff. It's like Christmas in August. I get excited about new stuff that's coming. And in this video, I'll be talking about the new stuff that's coming to Luminar Neo in their big fall upgrade. Now, I'll also, in addition to walking through and talking about the stuff that's coming, I'll also share some video snippets that Skylum provided for us in order to share with you so you can kind of see these tools in action. And I'll be talking about these tools as you're seeing those video snippets. Let's jump into it. Fall upgrade, it's expected in October-ish. Don't have an exact date. I'm gonna go with mid-October, but we don't know yet. Um, I don't have a copy of it right now. I did see an early beta copy, probably more like an alpha copy of one of these features that I'll be talking about. And it was really cool. And based on the video that you're gonna see, it's gotten even better. So I'm excited about that. And by the way, if you're interested in making sure that you're up to date and knowledgeable about all things Luminar Neo, I can help you in two ways. The first way is subscribe to my newsletter. There's a link down below. You'll get a free 27 page ebook about Luminar Neo and all the ins and outs and things you need to know to get up to speed quickly. You'll also get a bunch of presets and things like that. So check that out and join my newsletter if you're interested and that's down below. And of course, the second way is to subscribe to this channel right here because if you've been here before and haven't yet subscribed, you know that I will be making lots of videos about this new stuff because it's exciting and it's fun and it's useful. So let's get going. Fall upgrade expected sometime in October. Now, of course, they're having an early bird offer that starts today, August 15th, and it runs through August 25th. You can use my coupon code to save money if you need to buy it, but everybody doesn't need to buy it. And that's what we're gonna walk through here. So I'm gonna go through all these things here in detail, but if you're a subscription customer, this upgrade is free because you're a subscription customer. Otherwise, we're gonna jump into these things in detail. New customers, if you're a new customer, you get it for $79 a year for a subscription, or as you can see, $139 for a lifetime uh, outright purchase. Now again, these dates are until the 25th. And again, use my coupon code if you're a new customer and save money on that purchase. If you're an active subscriber today, it's free as part of your subscription. That is the beauty and the usefulness of having a subscription. You don't have to worry about it. When the new stuff comes out, you get it. That's why people use subscriptions. Uh, regarding lifetime license owners, if you bought a lifetime license, one-time purchase, and you bought it after July 1st, you're actually going to get this upgrade for free. They're going to grandfather you in if you bought it after July 1st. Uh, if you're a current lifetime owner and you bought it before July 1st, as you can see here, you can get the new annual upgrade pass, which is what they call it, for a one-time payment, or you can switch to a uh, subscription, 12 or 24 months. I don't know what the cost is to you of this simply because it's going to depend on your account. So you have to log into your account and go see this. Uh, so you can find out what the upgrade offer is if you're doing this by logging into your account. Again, don't forget my coupon code. It will save you money. And now let's talk about new features because, again, this is some of the funnest, coolest stuff. And having seen demos of all these, which you're about to see, I think you're going to be pretty excited too. First one is color transfer. This actually allows you to take colors from one photo and transfer them to another photo. So you take a reference image and say, I like the color scheme in that photo. You can use that as a reference image and apply that to another photo. It's really cool. Color masking, this is fantastic. If you've been here before, you know I love masking. I love, love, love masking. That's all caps. I love masking because it's so useful, it's so powerful, and my editing skills went up tremendously once I learned how to mask because I should say my results went up tremendously because I learned how to mask, which means I was controlling what the photo was, uh, what was happening in the photo. That's what's so great about it, and I won't talk about it ad nauseum here, but this allows you to create a mask for a specific color, and you can expand or contract that color range. It's really, really useful. There is a machine learning smart search uh, that allows you to search based on attributes uh, of the image as well as objects in the image, like mountains or birds, and you'll see that. It's really cool. You now have film strip in edit mode. So you can be in edit mode. You have that little film strip at the bottom so you don't have to go back to the catalog, get another photo, go back to edit. You can just go straight to the next photo. That's pretty cool. And there's a number of catalog improvements that I'm going to talk about on the next slide. In addition to that, all the generative AI tools are getting improvements as well. I think you're going to be pretty excited about that. I have seen some of those improvements and they're, and they're pretty amazing. 
Uh, catalog improvements, star labels. You can hotkey your images one through five to give it one to five stars. Um, and that's uh, beautiful because that's going to allow you to do your faves, if you will, like a five star image versus a three star or one star. Uh, and then, of course, you can sort by those. Um, note that this is only visible inside of Luminar Neo. So it's not reading XMMP data from uh, Lightroom or something like that. It's only inside of Luminar Neo. There's a new detailed view that gives you more information about your images. You can sort and e even rearrange folders and albums, which is awesome. You finally get virtual copies. This is huge. Everybody's been asking for this for years. You get virtual copies, which is so great. I'm so happy about that because I frequently, I constantly, in fact, make a actual physical copy of my photo and then do a different edit just as I'm experimenting. This is so cool. And there's now advanced filtering options where you can filter by camera model, focal length, ISO, shutter speed, aperture, all kinds of stuff. And you can even stack those and I'll show you that. So just to point out uh, what's free and what's not free. So the, the non-free stuff, if you want, is, is the smart search, the color masking, and the color transfer feature. Uh, but what is free for everybody is the catalog filtering, the virtual copies, the star rating, and the film strip. So again, depending on the stuff that we talked about earlier, if you're a subscription customer, everything's included. And if you're not, then you saw the uh, earlier information. So just keep that in mind as we go through it. And now that I've gone through that, I'm going to close this and I'm going to go ahead and open up the first video that I'm going to play for you, which is color masking. Okay, now again, remember, these videos were provided by Skyloom because they don't have a beta for folks like myself just yet. I will be getting it probably next month. And as soon as I uh, have it and am allowed to share videos from there, of course, you will get my take on all of these tools uh, once I've used them. But I'm going to play this video. There's no audio. So I'm going to talk about it as I play it. Now, color masking is going to be there in that masking menu on all the tools that have masks. And as you can see, you're going to get this eyedropper. You can go in and click and select a color. You'll notice that there's also this little box here. You can click and click until you pick the color that you want. And then you can drag the range slider, which is going to expand or contract the color range that this mask is being applied to. So that color picker or that eyedropper is key. And even though it looks like the sky is all entirely blue, you probably noticed that the mask doesn't cover every single bit of it. In fact, I'll just back up the video and show you. There you go. Even though he's uh, clicking on the blue, it's not picking up everything. And that's because the range, you know, as you expand or contract the range, that's going to get more or less of the blue or the white or whatever color you pick. So super cool, super powerful, super useful because this allows you to really control color. And I love color. You may know that if you've been here before. And this is way past the point of just using HSL to adjust the blues or something. This is really getting into it, and I love it. I'm super excited. Can't wait to have this tool and make videos about it. Okay, and now this little video snippet is color transfer, which, as you can see, shows up in the creative categories. It's called color transfer AI. There is a reference selection. That's your reference image that you pick that has the color scheme that you want to use as your basis to apply to the photo that you're editing. So in this case, you can see that reference image is kind of green, and there you go. Notice also that it takes it a moment, and that's because it's doing a lot of calculations. You can see here there's a number of different sliders that allow you to do different variations and adjustments. And since I don't have this tool, I can't really go into details yet about exactly how it works, but I will be showing that to you. You also see a little bit of like the star ratings and stuff down here in the bottom left corner. Um, here, you can also add your own reference images. In this case, that's from the movie Dune. And it's really, really orange. And so it's a really cool color scheme. And they are using that as a reference image. And again, it takes a moment. You can see that it's applying color transfer AI. And then there you go. The color transfer adjustment has been applied to the image. And again, amount and that sort of thing. You can adjust the intensity and the amount and do some other smoothing and that sort of thing here based on these sliders. Again, I'll come back in the future when I have it and have some more details about it and show you what it can do for you. But you will notice that that image has completely shifted. There's also object color mapping AI, which is allowing you to transfer not the colors from the entire image, but transfer the image from object to object. And in fairness, I don't have a lot of details on that. Again, I haven't used it because I don't have the beta yet, but that sh sounds like it gives you a lot even more detailed and fine grained control over how to apply these color transfers to your images. The bottom line is this is a really cool tool because 
let's say there's a photographer whose color work you admire. Maybe there's somebody out there and you follow them on Instagram, some famous photographer, and you're like, I love the colors that they have. I kind of want to have those kind of colors. You could take a snapshot of their image, use it as a reference, and apply that to your own photos. It's a great way to begin learning how to um, mimic colors that you see in other images and things like that. So I think a lot of power, a lot of flexibility, and frankly, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's color transfer. Okay, now we're going to talk about smart search, which as you can see is in this upper left-hand corner. And you can search for things like mountains, and it's going to go through the folder or the, uh, the entire catalog and look at all the images that have um, whatever it is that you're asking it to find. So it's a great way to narrow down your search for things. Maybe you're wanting to create um, an album lamb, right? In this case example, he typed in lamb, and it came up with all that. And I think the next one is wedding dress. Yeah. I've watched this a couple of times in preparation for this video. But notice, I'm going to pause this video. Let's see. Yeah, right there. That's a wedding dress at the very end of a pier in tiny, tiny, tiny uh, in the distance, and it still picked it up. So this looks to be pretty accurate and pretty uh, powerful. Uh, and in the next example, he types in birds. He brings up all his bird images, and that allows you also to group your images into albums, which is what he's doing over here. So they'll stay in the folder that they're in, but you can group and group them into an album, like a virtual collection of all your bird photos. So this smart search is a really cool way to narrow down to help you find what you're looking for, uh, but also to categorize and sort and organize your images. So I'm pretty excited about that. I think you're going to enjoy that feature quite a bit as well. Okay, now we're going to talk about the updates to the catalog because this is something that people have been asking about for, for a long, long time. Uh, and one of the first things they're going to show is this detailed view. So he's going to go to minimal view, but then you can see there's less information available except on hover. But detailed view, it's persistent, and there's the file name, the file type. You can see the star ratings, and now he's clicking through each photo. As he clicks on them, he's hitting the hotkey, one, two, three, four, five, to give it a star rating, so really powerful. Note that you can also do that from the action menu that shows up in the film strip uh, down there below, and you can also do it from this right-click menu uh, on a photo. And there's an example of the film strip in the edit mode. So again, you can click through these and uh, just do all sorts of things, but you're gonna be able to see that information there. Now next up is the new filtering options, and this is really cool as you can see here. You can go in and sort by the camera type, and uh, as well as this other information like focal length, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. So, and you can stack these. You notice there's a one right there, but he's gonna change cameras and he's gonna then sort by, uh, that's camera type, and now he's gonna go in and sort by ISO, and you're gonna see it's gonna isolate it down to just a couple of images, and boom, very quickly he found the two images he took with that camera with ISO 800, and you can see it says two in filters, and then, of course, now he's resetting. So it gives you the ability to really quickly filter through all the different attributes that are important to you. Now he's on this left-hand side showing you the adjustments to how you can rearrange folders. You can do various settings here. Instead of just them uh, showing up in the order in which you added them to Luminar, now you can rearrange based on your own custom order, ascending, descending, that sort of thing. But you can also just drag and drop them into place as he's doing now. So you have the ability to customize the look of that, which I'm a fan of because I've wanted to do that for quite a long time. The other thing, of course, is virtual copies, which I'm a super huge fan of. You can just right click and you can see that you'll have create virtual copy. You can also do that from that expanded menu down in film strip mode. And you will notice that there's a little two here now. There he goes, he's showing you that. And it's gonna copy over the edit uh, the crop, all that sort of stuff. So it's a virtual copy. It's not a physical copy. It's not taking up more hard drive space, um, but it does denote that with this little two here that shows you that it's a virtual copy. So that's going to be a really useful feature because I can't tell you how many times I create virtual, excuse me, I, I've been creating physical copies and then just re-editing to do something different and that sort of thing. This virtual copy, so many people have been asking for it's finally coming, and I think you're gonna be really happy about it. So having shown you all that between color masking, color transfer AI, smart search, all the catalog updates, including all the, the filtering and the virtual copies, this is a huge update. I'm super excited about it. Hope you're excited as well. If you don't have it yet, click the link below. That does provide me with a referral commission if you take advantage of that. And if you don't, that's cool. I'm still gonna be here making videos about it. I appreciate you stopping by. I hope this gives you a nice teaser preview of what's coming in Luminar Neo this fall. I'll be back as soon as I have more information to share. Thanks for hanging out, my friends. You guys leave any questions down below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'll see you in the next video. And until next time, my friends, adios.